Hey YouTube, it's uh, December 18th, 2011 here in uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Uh, this is supposed to be my part two of the coming out video, but uh, being that I'm a Gemini, I kind of bounce around from time to time, especially when someone is tugging at my heart or somebody has a question that really needs an answer. Uh, I'll take some segues and uh, try to address those things. One thing that has come to my mind, uh, come to my attention several times, is uh, how did I reconcile my faith? with my sexuality. Um, there's some guys in my audience who they know who they are and this is a very heavy thing on their hearts because they're uh, devout Christian men and uh, they're homosexual and they don't know how to reconcile these things. I, I don't know that I can teach you how to reconcile these things but I'll tell you what happened with me and how uh, I came to uh, love myself and, and claim, claim the way that God created me to be. Um, so, let me just try to quickly address that. Um, I need to keep it short because I know uh, people have a short attention span on, <laughs> on YouTube. So let me just cover some of these points, any one of which can be a whole other video all by itself. But these are the factors that led me to reconcile my faith and my sexuality. Number one is the church had lost its credibility over time. Um, I spent 28 years as a virgin. Uh, I led Bible studies on six aircraft carriers. Um, I was heavily involved with the big churches in the U.S. Um, and uh, my family were all fundamentalist Christians, or they still are, uh, of the Pentecostal charismatic sort. Um, but because of my experiences with these people, uh, people claiming to have gifts of the Holy Spirit, gifts of tongues, gift of knowledge, gift of prophecy, gift of whatever it is, uh, they had a whole shopping cart full of it. And uh, some events happened in my life that showed these people, every single one of them, uh, may have been sincere, but they were delusional. Uh, their gifts were false. Um, the way this came about is, long story short, I was um, witness to an exorcism of uh, someone very near and dear to me and uh, all the church elders were there and uh, they were casting out demons by name by name because their gifts of the Holy Spirit were telling them these things this went on uh, particularly on that night but it actually went on for a number of uh, years and months and years where this person would uh, manifest these demons and uh, they would be cast out by name uh, Beelzebub himself was one of them. Um, fast forward, uh, I discover when I was about 27 uh, from this very person who was possessed that she indeed wasn't possessed. Um, she was just a uh, teenage girl throwing some temper tantrums to get attention. And uh, that news devastated me. How could not just one of the church elders be deceived and deluded, but every single one of them. Uh, and not all from the same church, not all from the same Bible study, but throughout the history of this whole debacle, um, not one person discerned that this girl was just uh, a brat looking for uh, attention. So that really threw my mind for a loop. Like, how could the church be so thoroughly and utterly uh, uh, led astray by this little girl? So that's, that's the, the first one. Now, the second thing, the point to make is you can remove the gay issue from the entire equation, and the church is still going to find things to argue and bicker about. They, they fight over predestination. They fight over the rapture. They fight over the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Do we speak in tongues or don't we speak in tongues? Um, is the Lord coming be before the tribulation or after the tribulation? Uh, are you saved with the King James Bible only, or can you be saved with any Bible? Uh, which is interesting, because the King James Bible, well, King James was most likely gay himself, which is another dilemma for some people. Um, so you take gay out of the equation, and the church is still going to find things to fight and bicker about and divide itself for. Um, so don't take it too seriously, don't take it too personally when they don't like you for being gay because there's probably a thousand other things they don't like about you depending on what beliefs you reveal to them. So take it with a grain of salt, in my opinion. Um, the second big factor for me was 
I realized that God gave me a brain before he gave me a, a, a church, a belief system, a culture to live within. He gave me a brain, and I think that he expects me to use it. In fact, the Bible says, study to show thyself approved. And study is what I do. Um, study is what I did on the gay issue. And I realized that these very few verses in the Bible have been very contorted by the church throughout history and used to uh, further establish the church's power and authority over the lives of uh, ordinary people. And they thoroughly distorted uh, the meaning of these verses. If you're going to take the Bible literally, you have to take it in its original language. You have to understand the, the mind that wrote those words, the, the eyes that read it, and the culture that interpreted these things. You can't just take the English words off the page and say, aha, that's what God said. No, it's not what God said. Um, go back to the original language and the original culture to find out what these, uh, these very few verses mean. Uh, a great example of that is the, the whole story of Sodom and Gomorrah. The church has for millenniums used this to, to beat the heads of uh, homosexuals saying that the homosexuals wanted to sleep with these angels and God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of homosexuality, when in fact, every place that the Bible references that story, not once does the Bible itself say that Sodom and Gomorrah was about homosexuality. Anyways, that's another whole video. Um, so I realized that God gave me a brain, and he expects me to use it. Um, and I realized that, that I'm created in the image of God, too. I'm created with the same capacity to love and be loved that anyone else is, uh, and so are you. Um, your prayers are going to reach the same ears of the same God. The, the church does not have some sort of patent, some sort of copyright on the, on the heart of God or the mind of God or the throne of God. Your prayers are going to reach the same God. And as long as you speak to God with humility and uh, an earnest heart, he's going to answer you. He answered me. Uh, I prayed for years about the homosexual dilemma, but the irony is my dilemma was never with the conviction of the Holy Spirit that somehow I've committed a, a sin, even the thought, because like I said, as a virgin of 28 years, I uh, had committed nothing. Um, but even my desire to be loved and to love another man uh, was never a source of guilt for me. The Holy Spirit was never convicting me of this. My only turmoil was with the church, because I knew if I came out, I was going to lose everything. I was going to lose uh, respect, I was going to lose social status, I was going to lose friends, I was going to lose my church, maybe job opportunities. There's all sorts of things that could happen, and those were the dilemmas. Those were the gymnastics in my heart. You know, um, it, but I, it was not guilt. Uh, there's, why should I feel guilty of choosing to love in a world so full of hate and division? I'd much rather stand before God on my last day and explain to him why I loved another man, and to stand before him and say why I destroyed the life of millions of innocent people because they didn't love who I told them to love. You know, they didn't love a, a woman, um, and I and I destroy them in the name of Jesus Christ. I would shudder to stand before God, and, and tell him that. Um, if I err, I'm going to err on the side of love. It's as simple as that. The church can destroy whoever they want. They can contort whatever they want. Uh, the church has no more authority, no more access to God than I do. So, so when I had two religious teachings, one's cool with being gay, the other one's not, uh, both have credible, valid, intelligent arguments, some of them, uh, how do I decipher between the two? Well, that's where I come into play with the conviction that's on my heart and the brain that God put in my mind. Um, and, and I see that, I, that I'm a good and decent human being, that I'm just going to live my life with love and dignity and honor and truth. And if anyone has a problem with that, they can define what the problem is, what they don't like about uh, love and truth and honor. Uh, any religion that demands that I commit intellectual suicide or that I not love someone else, someone who completes me, is no religion, no God that I'm going to follow. So... Um, Anyways, I've got a life to live. I hope that you can live your life with dignity as well. Uh, and I'm going to live my life exploring all the greater glory of God. So it's a beautiful world out there, and I'm going to discover it. All right, I hope that helps. Um, if it doesn't, I could probably make a whole other video on any single point that I made in this one. All right, you guys know who you are. You know who uh, wrote me. And uh, God bless. 
Good luck to you. Later. Bye.